Hi, I'm Greg Nidell with Rev Robotics, and here I'm going to conclude our kickoff concepts series. Uh, before I talk about this robot, I want to talk about uh, what kickoff concepts is and what its purpose is. Uh, every year when we, uh, right around kickoff, uh, we take our time and our engineers and the people inside of Rev, and we build concepts for you. Uh, the purpose of us sharing these concepts to teams is to uh, provide a foundation that maybe your team can build upon. Uh, we don't go out there to try to solve the solution, to give you the robot that's going to win the world championship, even, even win your local tournaments. Uh, it's really all about giving you a foundation uh, to start with. Um, this year, um, in partnership with FIRST, um, FIRST asked us uh, for a very specific challenge, and that challenge was to design a full robot uh, just using the parts that are in our FTC starter kit um, and that could play somewhere between 60 and 65 percent of the game. Um, that is what this robot is. Um, we are going to be publishing um, not just this video that goes over the parts of this robot, but we're also going to be publishing a step-by-step -step build guide. Again, the, the intent with this robot uh, is to maybe do something that your team can quickly assemble first and then try it and test it uh, because we're really trying to recognize that there are FTC teams of all different types. There are teams that are two students in a house with no mentors and there are teams that have all the resources in the world. So the purpose of this robot and a lot of the other kickoff concepts to, uh, that we do is really about trying to help the folks who need help getting started with their robot. Um, we don't anticipate this robot being the one that you would bring to competition that's going to be the one that wins the whole thing, but we do think that this robot uh, performs a lot of the tasks within the game really, really well. And so I do want to clarify exactly what the purpose of this is. Um, I recognize that some people one might wish that we did not do this, but we really do, uh, we are trying to do things to help the vast majority of teams and really raise the competition floor in regards to what teams are accomplishing when they show up at their first competition and what you can accomplish within your season. So without further ado, uh, we are calling this our 2021 starter bot and it is built 100% from parts that are in our FTC starter kit, our V3 version of it. Um, it is also, uh, the other constraint that we put on this is that we are only using a single control hub. So we did not add additional motors, we did not add an expansion hub, we did not add a lot of things like that. So there is plenty of opportunity to improve upon this robot, and I'll, I'll point out a couple of the, those drawbacks, but really the goal was what type of robot can we design with a starter kit, and also how can we do it without requiring teams to cut or modify their pieces too much so that they can iterate their own design. So what we landed on with this robot is an intake that's on a single jointed arm. And let's talk about the pieces because it's a combination of the other stuff that we've done during kickoff concepts. So for the intake itself, we chose a flapper style intake. So this flapper style intake um, seemed to do the best at picking up all three different objects, the cubes, the balls, and the ducks. It's very simple to make. It's just a piece of the corrugated plastic that comes in the starter kit um, attached to an axle with a couple of gears to uh, help with some packaging. But as you can see in the video here, this thing picks up all the objects with pretty relative ease. Um, with the ball, you have to make sure, you know, it might be a little bit worse at the ball than the cube. But um, it's, since you're only managing a single game piece at a time, this flapper intake seems to work well. And we just used actually the cardboard box from one of the motors as the catch bin for that. And the same flapper both spits things out when you want to score it or sucks them in. So it works really well and it's really simple and easy to construct. For the drivetrain, uh, we used a modified version of the FTC uh, 
uh, starter kit drivetrain, um, with the major difference being that we dropped the axles. So normally, with the FTC starter kit drivetrain, these axles are running through the central holes in our channel. Um, that did not give you enough ground clearance to drive over the, the pipes to get into uh, where all the game pieces are. So all we did was use some of the pillow blocks in our channel, dropped the axle, and then went with a four-wheel drive method with the two motors included in the kit. And this robot drives over uh, perfectly. It goes over, maybe, maybe it could be a little bit smoother, but you will drive over the, the bumps just fine, as you see in, in the video. So next is, um, we decided to go with a single jointed arm, right? So single jointed arms are incredibly easy to build. It uses one core hex motor to drive the actual arm to a gear ratio. And because of this arm and its configuration, the way it's done, you can score at all the three different levels on the actual goal. So all the way down in the low, the medium, or the high. Um, this definitely could be improved upon, but given the constraints that we were going for at building this with just the items that are in your starter kit, um, this accomplishes those tasks really well. Um, and so the last mechanism on the robot is the carousel mechanism. The carousel mechanism um, we felt like was a very important part of this year's game. Uh, bringing the ducks or your team's element onto the field was a lot of points, especially within the end game. So what we did was we had a servo uh, connected to just one of our grip wheels. And this is set at the right height for the carousel off the floor. Um, because it's a servo, it doesn't spin it terribly fast. Uh, but under the constraints that we were doing where we were trying to keep everything to a single starter kit and a single control hub, um, a servo works well for this mechanism. Uh, you can either speed up your servo through gearing or if you're going to add on an extra expansion hub to add motors and do things, changing this over to a motor probably would give you some advantage moving forward in the future. A couple things to point out. I mentioned that we didn't want to cut anything. So uh, you'll notice that a lot of these axles uh, on the wheels, on here, things are long. These are things that we would want to trim before the competition. But when you're in your shop trying to start your process, leaving stuff like this long isn't really going to hurt anything. And then it gives you those pieces that haven't been modified um, for you to test things out. Uh, we think that this is going to be a great foundation, something that if you're just getting started with FTC, uh, you will want to maybe even just build this robot, play with it, try it out, see what it is, and then recognize that like this is kind of a really good floor for most teams. So if you're building a custom robot, you probably are going to want to be able to score better than this one. Um, and we think that that's totally possible. There's plenty of places to improve upon this robot, and um, we hope that it's a really great inspiration for you to start the season. Uh, as with all of our uh, documentation, both this robot and all of our other documentation for kickoff concepts are going to be located at docs.revrobotics.com. And if you've got any questions uh, or you want to need any help throughout the season, feel free to reach out to us at support at revrobotics.com. And we're always here for you, and we look forward to seeing you at a competition this season. Thanks.